Even if you are the one experiencing depression, it is hard to understand it. So in this video, I'm going to summarize one of the best lectures I've heard on depression, which is from Dr. Sapolsky from University of Stanford. So let's start with the definition. First of all, there is a difference between feeling sad and clinical major depression. When you experience a loss in your life, whether it's a job, a child, a dog, you experience grief. And this is sadness, not major depression. Depression is a biological disease that can be measured and observed in your brain the same way you can observe cancer or diabetes. So clinical depression, also called major depression, has eight main biological symptoms and now we're going to talk about them. First symptom is that you are incapable of feeling pleasure. This is so bad even when you say it and this is what makes depression one of the hardest and most terrible mental disorders out there because it's literally a hell inside your head. You could have a big house, beautiful kids, a dog, a child, and you can still feel no pleasure. And this is depression. You are basically daily tortured by your brain. And the hardest part is that there is no external factor that you can just remove and doing so make yourself feel better and this is how you also feel helpless because it does not seem to be under your control the second symptom is that you experience grief and despair but not like the sadness the sadness you can pinpoint the reason for your grief and despair in depression you almost start to feel delusional about it like for example if you break your leg and technically speaking every single day you feel better the leg is healing and doctors could show you the charts and prove to you, you could sit there and believe that the fact you feel better or you can move a bit more is because you're taking pills, but actually you are not healing at all. And I know it sounds like an abstract example, but the point with depression is that you could sit there and be presented with all the evidence in the world why you should feel better and different and you don't because your brain doesn't allow that. Third major symptom is the psychomotor retardation. This is when you just don't want to move. Everything is exhausting. Even thinking about doing your laundry is exhausting. And it looks like you're just stuck and you don't want to move at all. But at the same time, what is observed in patients in this period is that they have increased stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. So you are not moving, but your brain is on fire and your entire stress system is overstimulated. Fourth major symptom is the suicidal thoughts. And what is important here to understand is that when somebody is in the psychomotor retardation period, they are safe in regards to suicide because they are so deprived of energy and just desire to do anything, they're not gonna hurt themselves. The problem though is usually when people get out of this, they seem to be doing better, they appear to be healing, but what actually happens is that they're still absolutely depressed, but they just have a bit of energy. And this kind of looks like a final win before the death experience. You have to really look after people who you know are depressed and the moment they start feeling a bit better, or if that's you, this is exactly where you have to pay the most attention to them. Fifth are the vegetative symptoms. Here we're talking about eating, sleeping, and they are very common patterns. Usually people do not eat as much when they're really in a major depression. People do not sleep that much they wake up early they may be laying in bed and like not doing much but they usually wake up at like 4 or 5 a.m and they cannot go back to sleep another thing that can be observed black and white is that their sleep patterns are completely messed up as compared to non-depressed person what i mean here is that all of us have five stages of sleep and we all go through those cycles every single night depressed people not at all their sleep structure is completely messed up the sixth major symptom that you can observe in major depression is that they are going through cycles. For example, somebody could be depressed for two months straight, then being better for one year, and then again, two months depressed, one year fine, two months depressed. And those patterns can be very easily observed in the long term. So if you're still thinking that depression is something you can just snap out of it because you're causing to yourself, then the last two, I believe, will convince just anybody how much of a biological, real disorder this is. 
So symptom number seven is the change in your neurotransmitters. And very quickly, what is actually neurotransmitters? You have those two neurons and they communicate to each other and there is no direct contact between them. So if this neuron wants to say something to this one, this one has to release a neurotransmitter in the space between them, which is called the synapses. And here, this one is grabbing this neurotransmitter. This is very simplified neurological uh, 101, not even science here. But the point is, those neurotransmitters activate the neurons. And we have four neurotransmitters that are essential for depression. Norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and substance P. Now, something really important about the norepinephrine. When, for example, you are drinking a lot, you usually have a high blood pressure. And if your doctor prescribes you pills to lower your blood pressure, you are actually getting less norepinephrine as well. Meaning, on one hand, you're trying to stop alcohol and this naturally depresses you because alcohol is a depressant, withdrawing makes you feel worse. On the other hand, you're taking pills to reduce your blood pressure, which pills are naturally making you depressed as well. So you have two factors put together. And if your doctor doesn't explain this to you, it's very natural that you feel so bad that you will grab another drink to make yourself feel better. And this is one of the many reasons why if pills are not communicated well, they can hurt so much the patients and, well, long topic. And to make it a bit shorter, the most important part is that low dopamine is related to your inability to feel pleasure. Low norepinephrine is related to your psychomotor retardation and low serotonin has to do with obsessive amount of grief and guilt. Finally, substance P is about pain. So when you give depressed people pills that decrease the substance P neurotransmitter in their brain, they feel better, which means their feeling of pain is physical. It's not just something that they made up. It is as real as if they broke a leg. And that is why pills that decrease the sense of pain help people with depression. Now, finally, we arrive at the eighth symptom, which is change in your hormones. As we already said, we can observe change in the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. We can also observe very low levels of thyroid hormones, which are also linked to Hashimoto disease. And final example here is the postpartum depression. This is when we can clearly observe decrease of the hormones estrogen and progesterone. So when we have somebody who just gave birth, it is very very real when they experience depression and it's not something to do with them not loving their child or being weird. It's something to do with their incredible low amount of those two hormones. And studies show that postpartum depression can last from six weeks to three years. I really hope this video on one hand made you realize that it's not just in your head when you are experiencing depression and you have to seek help the same way you would if you were having pain, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, anything else. It's as biological and as real as those. And on the other hand, I really hope it convinced some people who are still having doubts about the reality of this and if you have a loved one who is going through depression please stop telling them to snap out of it it's not up to them they are literally fighting their brain every day and they may look like they're not moving and they're at peace and they're lazy but what actually happens is that they're overly stressed and overly sad and in grief and in despair and they need help more than anything else. Thank you for watching this video. My entire channel is about mental health. I also give some coaching exercises that you can use at home. And I'm just really all about spreading awareness and knowledge about mental health because yeah, I think we are all here to try and help each other. I also believe in community and I probably should stop giving uh, five minutes goodbye messages. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.